I'm Chosen Architect, and this is All the Mods 9, and today we dive into auto crafting with refined storage and also auto crafting with mechanism. Hopefully, you guys are ready. Ah, nothing like Industrial Revolution in the morning. That's right, today we are going to be revolutionizing our setup here in All the Mods 9, and that means we are going to dive into mechanism. Now, not only are we gonna get into mechanism, but we're also going to get into refined storage, auto crafting and transferring items using refined storage. That means we can actually utilize our main storage network as a means of piping items around. And that's probably going to be the primary part of my use when it comes to refined storage, as eventually we will switch to applied energistics. But until then, this is going to be our primary source but also our piping method. Now we've already utilized the metallurgic infuser with mechanism and we've already made windmills that we've used to generate some power in our other dimensions. But now we have access to an infinite and abundant amount of power. So that means we should be able to easily upgrade our machines and start getting into more advanced processing methods. For right now, I have just my metallurgic infusers, but I can actually upgrade these into basic factories. So this is going to upgrade our machine to a factory version of itself. Now, the interesting part is when you upgrade these machines, they do carry over their settings and everything like that. But I love this retexture. So there's a lot of new textures in mechanism, and this is just one of them. The new factories are kind of sleek. They look really good, and I think they would look amazing up against a really dark concrete. Even the cyan terracotta seems to be really fitting right up next to it. Like... If we put this exactly next to this, yeah, I think like dark gray concrete would look really good or even mixed right up next to actual black concrete. <laughs> These machines look really nice now. Now you may have noticed this. This is the pattern grid. I actually ended up making the pattern grid and I wanna show you how I'm going to set up some basic auto crafting with this mod. So to do this with a uh, refined storage, all we're gonna need is a few things. It's very simple to set this up. You're just gonna need a crafter and this is where you're gonna put your patterns. Um, but by default, this only has nine slots. But if we were to upgrade this, which is a extra mod called extra storage, um, we can actually get more slots out of this. So instead of just having nine slots, we now have two more rows of nine. So now we have 27 total crafting slots instead of just nine. So it's definitely worth upgrading it at least to this version. Now, upgrading it to the next tier is going to require a little bit more. You are gonna need these neural processors in order to do this. And the neural processors, while not super expensive, it's just an extra step that you have to take. Now, with the crafters, we can go ahead and get them placed down. I'm actually gonna place them just like so. And so right here, we have two spots that we can create patterns for, and these on their own will just do normal crafts. So anything you can do in a crafting grid, you can actually have these do for you. Uh, but this has even more functionality than just crafting regular things. You can actually have it send items to be processed. So it can actually take recipes where you say, send one iron and one redstone, for example, into the infusing factory, and it can do that. It can send it into a storage, and then that can go into the factory. And then you just need some way to put it back into the system. So this is just the, the, the couple ways that you can use this. And when I say simple, it's it's very bare bones. Even the quests mention it as being a very simple storage method. So uh, if we dive into the actual All the Mods Star, it does mention it down here, how RS is a simple network-based storage system. Now, while this does create multiple steps down the road, I'm going to be patting myself on the back for making a bunch of patterns. Um, just getting some basic auto crafting up and running is the best thing you can do. And I will say, one of the first patterns I always like to make is a pattern. So the first pattern is a pattern, and that's pretty straightforward. Um, but if we notice, do I have glass automated? No. So that should probably be the second thing I automate. And I should also automate the production of the, uh, the quartz enriched iron, because I would have to craft those in order to make this. So these things are pretty straightforward to craft. However, glass is a little bit different. To be able to actually craft glass, it's going to require a processing pattern. Um, and so we, it will automatically, whenever you click the plus button, it will automatically switch over to a processing. And this is how you make a process. It's going to be an input, 
and this is what it's expecting as an output. So it's looking for the item to come back into the system. So what we need here is some way to send the item into a barrel, for example, uh, or in this case, it's going to get smelted, right? And then we need some way to pull it out of an inventory and send it back into refined storage. Um, and then it will detect that it has been crafted and it will complete the craft. Um, so to do this, uh, we will need a, another crafter, but we're also gonna need a couple of other things. And this is where the piping comes in from refined storage. You can actually set this up. We set this to two way. You can actually set up um, the sending and receiving of items with an importer and an exporter. And I always like to think of this from the perspective of the refined storage network. An exporter is going to pull from the network. It's gonna export out of the network. And then the importer is going to import into the network. So that's the best way to kind of look at it so you don't get kind of confused. You're not exporting from the machines, you're going to be importing from the machines. So with that in mind, we know now importers are probably going to be one of the most used things. Now getting a smelting setup going very quickly is going to really help you out with refined storage because that allows you to get all of your processors for the mod set up. That way you can just simply auto craft an importer. And as soon as you have refined storage in itself automated and same thing with applied energistics, it will make your life so much easier because then you can just simply auto craft all of the components for making more auto crafts happen. Now, funny thing, I need to run some cables because this mod does require cables in order to hook things up. Uh, however, there is a way of sending your system uh, cross-dimensionally and also wirelessly places, and we'll dive into that a little bit later. But for now, I'm just gonna be running some simple cables, and there's actually a little thing that will help us. So instead of building like two by two tunnels literally everywhere and doing twice the work, we can make the shrink device. So this is the personal shrinking device, and this thing will allow you to adjust the size of yourself, which is pretty darn cool, and it will allow me to simply shift right click and shrink down into a tiny little person. Uh, and then you can also uh, shift and pull up, and there you go. So shift and right click will allow you to shrink and, uh, and enlarge. Um, there is also hotkeys, I believe, for this. Uh, another thing you can do is you can punch mobs, and the mobs will actually change size. So that's another little tip. Um, you can make things incredibly large if you really like, but I think this is what's really useful. So you can just simply fit in a tunnel here and we can actually tunnel our way to our point of interest. And so I want to run a cable along the back side here. And it's as simple as just doing this <laughs> because we have a jetpack, and we can just literally fly around and we can locate exactly where we want our cables to be. And just like that, we now have the ability to route a cable through this single wide area. There's also a little bit of clipping that happens, even though it, it has gotten a lot better uh, than it used to be. But when you're this small, you do tend to clip. Now, a cool part is you can actually fit this size between cables. However, you can, you have to hold down shift to be able to go underneath them. Um, but yeah, you can actually fit under and around the cables, which is amazing in my opinion. So with the crafter for processes, we can place it onto inventories such as this barrel. But when we do, we need to make sure that it is facing a certain direction. So that's where the actual wrench from refined storage comes into play. So, so long as this is hooked to a uh, cable, we can rotate this and we need it facing the actual barrel and it needs to go in this direction. Whatever face this side right here is touching, is the side that is going to send the items to. And so the best way to see that is like this. Um, and the best way to rotate is using this wrench. Uh, also, this wrench is very useful for other mods as well. So now that we have this facing the direction we want, if we put in our patterns for smelting, it should just work. But we are going to need the importer that is going to need to be on this barrel. Um, now, I left it this way to also demonstrate that this can send to an, uh, inventories, but it can also send directly into the machines as well, um, which is kind of nice, but it does limit because what if we want to smelt something that uh, we don't have autocrest for right now? Well, we wouldn't be able to really do that. We'd have to place it in here and we're limited on space. So it's pretty nice to actually have the ability to have it just go into a storage. Now, an importer. We have the importer right here and I just need to shrink myself down find the back of the machine here, and I should be able to just swap the cable out. It's gonna be kind of difficult to see, but right here is the barrel, 
And so if I go ahead and break this and I put the importer on the back of the barrel like that, this will now pull the items out of that barrel, the items that I put in, for example, these cables, it'll pull them out and it'll end up going right into the refined storage system. So with all of this, we should now be able to craft glass. So let's go ahead and craft some glass. Um, everything should be hooked in. It does look like that has power and that is connected in here. Do we have sand? We do have sand. This should set the craft. It should give us the option. Ah, yes, it does give us the option, but I am so used. I am so used to using Applied Energistics and it giving me a representation of things that I have available for AutoCraft as an icon that I did not even realize, but we should have this on here and I should be able to hold down control in, with this mod control and shift. And if I already have ingredients in here, it should allow me to request them. Um, and we'll see, this will light up. It's sending the items, they get put in here and that is now completing the auto craft. So we should now be able to craft more patterns. And this also means that we're going to be able to auto craft pretty much all of the resources for this mod. Now I just set up a ton of things for auto crafting that is all related to refined storage and all of the things that we're gonna wanna mess with. And that includes all of the processors and all that fun stuff. So there is still one more thing that I want to get done. And that is going to be access to this wirelessly. Now to be able to access this, we are going to need ourselves a wireless transmitter. So let's get into refine and we'll just go ahead and craft a basic wireless transmitter. So this is how you would do it normally. And you would place this on top, give yourself a range upgrade and it gives you wireless access. But there is an advanced wireless transmitter in here from the reborn storage mod, which is another add on for refined storage that will give you a ton of range. However, it does cost another netherite ingot, but I think we can go ahead and actually use this. Uh, I would not mind having this, and it's going to give us a default range of a thousand blocks, and each upgrade is going to expand that, uh, I believe, a thousand. And that's going to be really great, because around our base, by default, I think you can go up to a max of 48 blocks for the base wireless transmitter, which means you would need multiple wireless transmitters connected throughout your base to multiple network receivers and transmitters. So this is a really, really good option. So all we need are these basic ingredients here, and we have ourselves an advanced version of this instead. So this is going to end up going right up top here. And this thing right here by default, as you can see, bouts a powerful 1000 block range, and each upgrade that you can add into here for range will end up expending this even more. Now, something else cool I wanna show you when it comes to crafting things, for example, I wanna craft a grid, but I know I'm probably not gonna make too many grids. You notice the button is blue, and if you hold down control, what this will do is this is going to start the auto crafts for all of those components that we don't have in storage, but do have auto crafts set up for. And that means we just wait a moment for those things to craft, and now we can actually just craft it. So it's very nice for those few things that you may only craft like once or twice, and you do realize, oh, I don't have enough ingredients for it. So that button is fantastic. And this actually is available for both refined storage and applied energistics. It is kind of interesting how similar these two mods have gotten over the years. All I need to do now is simply craft up the wireless crafting grid. And to, it, it'll say right here, network not found. We need to shift right click on this right here. And now we should have access. So I have now shift right clicked on the controller and that is how you link up your grid to your network. And we should have access to this way over here. Like we could be over a thousand blocks with just our basic range upgrade in there um, or, or our new, I wouldn't say range upgrade, but our new uh, advanced wireless transmitter. And yes, we are ready to go. Another cool thing, you can put this inside of a curio slot. So I can put it inside of a ring slot or it really doesn't matter. We can put it inside the grid slot and then I can assign a hotkey. Up to this point, I have had the crafting table on a stick set to control E, but I really like having control E set to this. So that's what I'm going to do in the controls. And believe me, I will 100% forget that I have this in my inventory and I will go several times to the main storage over here 
without realizing I could just open it up here. Yeah, I wouldn't be chosen if I didn't do that. You know what? Since we've already dived a little bit into the reborn storage, might as well also make the super wireless grid. It makes total sense to do this. However, this is going to require a regular wireless grid, and I would assume that the super grid also has crafting potential. Uh, it does have different modes, so I would assume. So just like that, here's the super wireless grid that is going to charge up. I'm going to shift right click to go ahead and select this. And yes, the super wireless grid is also a crafting grid and we can open it up. So if I go ahead and tuck this one away, we can then just use this and we can change its mode. So I have control R set to change its mode so we can switch between crafting, fluid, monitor, and all of this different stuff. So this has literally every grid on here. Everything except for crafting, let's see, it does have regular crafting. The monitor is for crafting monitor. Um, and then we have fluid, which is gonna be how you can store fluids in here. So yeah, not too bad, interesting. I do, however, like applied energistics, how you have all of your different types of uh, terminals that you can access, which I think you can still do with refined storage. Um, but this one's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, it does store more power, which uh, is always nice if you don't have wireless charging at this point. It can also go in the slot and we can now get it to work. The cool part about this one is um, the other grid, I was actually having a problem with control E not actually working properly. Every time I'd hit control, it would just go ahead and open the grid, which is not what I wanted. Uh, but this one seems to be working just fine. Now let's get back to mechanism and the automation. Now that we have access to the automation stuff and we can just up and craft it, Let's talk about automating with mechanism. So mechanism has this sort of progress or, or progression that you need to go through. And in this progression, you're going to be basically upgrading your mach machines through different tiers of its circuits. Um, and there are new textures now for these. So you have a basic circuit, you have advanced circuit, and you have an elite circuit, and then it goes up to ultimate circuits. And all of these need very specific things in order to make them. So we have infused alloy, for example. This requires redstone, a certain amount of it, and then that makes iron. And then we have the reinforced, which is gonna require a little bit of liquid diamond that gets smelted down. And uh, this is going to take that infused alloy and upgrade that into reinforced. And then we have the atomic alloy, which is going to require a whole other process in itself, making the refined obsidian dust which is a combination inside of another infuser with diamond and obsidian dust. And then that is ultimately going to make an atomic alloy. Um, so this process, while it does seem kind of daunting, can really be done in a few machines. However, with applied energistics, it can all be done in one machine. Um, and the reason why is this is very limited in how it distributes its items. So it can actually distribute its items into a barrel but the unfortunate part is this doesn't know what to do with those items. It really doesn't know. Um, so it can just all of a sudden send a bunch of diamond dust in here when it's trying to actually make the first tier alloy, which would be wanting iron. And so this slot would fill up with iron, this would fill up with diamond, and the whole machine would stop. Well, with Applied Energistics, there's a mode called blocking, and it allows it to only send one recipe worth of items at a time. Refined storage doesn't appear to have that that setting. Um, and I don't believe it can use regulator upgrades in order to do that. So that means we are going to need multiple machines. And that means that it's just going to be a bit more complicated early on, um, but we will make this a lot simpler down the road. Now there is another production material that we're gonna need quite a bit of, and that's gonna be steel. So this is gonna be one of the first things that I actually want to set up automation for. And we can actually utilize these two machines right here, these two infusing factories, in order to make it. However, I do want to sort of explain, you can make steel without using mechanism. Um, so if we take a look at the hammer recipes, there is actually a ability to make steel dust with just regular iron dust that you can get from the hammer and iron ingots or I raw iron. And then you just combine that with four coal and you get one. Now this process is only gonna use two coal in order to make the actual steel. Um, and so all we need to do is put coal in here, that's gonna build up. We put the iron in, I'm gonna turn this into splitting mode. That's gonna do three at a time. It's gonna be pretty slow at first, uh, but that is going to produce this. And then we need it to send the uh, the material that it's about to make, which is the enriched iron, 
we need to send that over to this machine. Um, now, we can do this directly, which is pretty cool. But we could also just send it from another crafter, which I think is a good idea in this situation, um, is just sending it through. We could actually automate the entire process with just a single infusion factory as well. And I'm actually going to do that. Now, to do this up top, I'm going to want a regular crafter that sends into a barrel. Now, because this has this particular machine has a input, uh, two different inputs, we have to kind of be careful with this. We can't just directly send it to the machine, unfortunately. We uh, need to send it into a barrel and then let a pipe distribute the ingredients to its appropriate side. And thankfully, mechanism machines are super configurable. So you can actually see now even what is connected to it, which is pretty darn cool. But if you want to clear everything, which I like to do, you can just go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and set the auto eject to on. And we're going to say the top, if we move this, we're going to say the top is going to be the red. And then we want the back slot here to be the yellow. And so we just need to set this to the extra slot. And this machine is pretty much configured and ready to go. It is going to accept items from the top and from the back. Uh, and then we also almost forgot, we need to tell it, hey, the output, the items here, they need to be sent to the bottom. Uh, for right now though, I am going to have it sent over here and notice they can send items from machine to machine. But we're gonna actually want this set not to there, we want it set to the bottom because I'm gonna have an importer down here. Now that we have a little bit of steel made, we can actually make the cables. So I wanna use mechanism cables for this because I think they look kind of cool. Um, and we can always use trap doors to cover up this if we really want to, once we start getting into our design work of the base. So I need this logistics pipes. And logistic pipes are what is used in mechanism for transferring items around. Um, and something else I'm going to need is going to be a mechanism configurator. Um, and this is how you kind of change the settings and the modes of these pipes. It's also how you're going to disconnect these pipes. So we've got them connected here. But if I have another set like this, notice they're connected together and I don't want them connected together. So I hold down shift and I right click three times and it's going to disconnect them just like so. Uh, and the same for this three times and now they're on their own path. But the cool thing is, is we can set this to extract mode. So now it's going to pull what this sends into it out and it's going to automatically know where to send the iron and where to send what I would call a catalyst into here. And it will automatically get that going. Um, the only reason I have this machine over here running is just so I can get some steel made up before we get the automation done. Uh, because the next step is to put an importer on here. So there we go. That's pretty much it. Uh, now we could use uh, logistical transporters to pull out and send it into a single inventory, which is something that we may do in the future, but just using these importers on their own is not a, a big deal to actually craft. So there we go. We have this one side almost ready to be called done and can produce steel. Um, the cool part is, is it should know, uh, it is smart enough to kind of know what needs to be sent first. And if you don't have anything in the system, of course, it's going to try and send uh, the first set that it needs first before it can make anything else. So when it comes to making steel inside of the single container, it should be able to do that. Now, this is where things can get a little bit complicated, but I will say it's not it's not horrible. So the current setup that we were just using, using two of our coal to make one steel is not the most odd. Uh, not, it's not the most resource efficient way of doing this you can actually get more optimized by using an enrichment chamber. Now this setup should be a lot simpler. All we need is a basic enrichment factory and we just need a crafter that goes right on top. So a regular crafter should be able to go in here and this is going to be used for a lot of processes, but for right now we can just immediately send items into the top. So we'll say input from the top and then we're gonna output from the bottom. and Unlike Applied Energistics, we cannot automatically send the items back into the crafter, um, which is kind of unfortunate. Now, with Applied Energistics and the pattern providers, you can do that. Um, and this would be very simple with that mod. But for right now, with our simple setup, uh, without needing to go through the massive infrastructure that is Applied Energistics, I think this is pretty good. So now for the fun part, actually making the processing patterns for the steel. 
And this is just one of many automations, but it is going to demonstrate exactly how to set up all of the other ones without me needing to really show them. So let's go ahead and dive through this. So we need to make steel. And if we take a look at the recipe for the steel, we are going to see that it is a steel dust that we need to make and diving all the way in to how we actually produce steel inside of a metallurgy infuser, we're gonna see uh, the carbon value. If we click the carbon, we'll be able to see how much everything sort of gives. Um, and this is kind of important because we need to take a look at enriched carbon or the enriched versions and how much it gives. Notice one enriched carbon, which I'm gonna mark, gives us 80 millibuckets, whereas one coal ends up giving us only 10. So we are going to get eight times as much from our coal if we do it this way, meaning we should be able to get four steel for one coal instead of the other way around, which was one steel would cost two coal. And all we have to do is enrich it. And that's just by sending coal in the enrichment chamber. So this will be our first processing pattern and that needs to go over here. So that's going to send the coal through, it's going to enrich it, and then it's going to give us the output. Now we want to take that output of enriched coal and we want to set up our first steel recipe. Um, so we can go ahead and do that over here if we take a look at the smelt, right? There it is, the smelting. Um, and it's going to produce this dust, right? So we need to take one, it, it's showing enriched iron. This is because this is the first step. But if we take a look here, we're gonna see that it is going to take one iron and produce this, but that is with tin. Um, so we need to keep in mind that if we send this enriched carbon with it, we're going to have to up our value here a little bit um, because this is going to be eight worth in this one recipe. So we'll have to set this to eight for that one carbon here. And uh, let's go ahead and set that. And then we'll leave this. And then we need to make sure the output is going to be eight as well. So this one enriched carbon is going to produce eight of the, uh, the enriched iron. And then that enriched iron, we need to make a recipe for it and its uses. So it's going to produce steel dust. Now this is also gonna need the enriched and this is also gonna to need to be set to the same thing, which is going to be eight. So we'll just set that to eight with one enriched carbon and this will also need to be set eight. Uh, and I hope that's not too confusing, but these will both go in the same pattern provider and should go into the, into here and should be ready to go. Um, now, the other step is just simply smelting the steel dust. Um, so we need to create a recipe for that inside of our pattern here. And we have one more left. So the use for this, we need to make the steel and there we go. Um, now we don't want 33, that's not what we want. We actually want this to be set to one to one. One dust equals one ingot, and that is going to go over in our smelting pattern for now, until we get a smelter factory up and running. So now we should be able to make more steel. Let's go ahead and test this out by creating, let's do 64 steel for right now. And as soon as I start this, you're gonna notice the enrichment factory is going to start running. And then as soon as we get our first enriched coal here, this recipe should kick off. So you'll notice it's dividing everything up. It has just sent the enriched carbon and it's just sent the iron and the iron is now loading into the top slot. And thankfully these pipes, they do not really overfill and start to spill items out. They'll actually just transfer what they can um, and they don't get gummed up either. They won't get kind of blocked up with any items, which is another nice thing about these pipes. And they can also be sped up later, um, which is something we're probably gonna end up needing to do. Same with all of the machines. But yes, that's going in and we are getting to our last few and then we should notice the enriched go in. There's the enriched, but it sent all of the enriched. It should send all of the enriched that it has available. Um, and you'll see there's a ton of carbon in here. That's because once this gets some of that enriched, it's going to then send the enriched back into the system um, as soon as it receives all of the enriched for the craft. And there it goes. It's already starting to send that enriched iron back. And this is where I'm saying that uh, without doing these all separate, this could cause a problem because if you did sort of have multiple recipes that you start after this, and let's say you ended up having different catalysts for those, 
yeah, you're probably going to end up with some messes. But that's why I recommend separating all of the catalysts when using refined storage. Separate all of your catalysts into different infusers. Now that I have steel, we can get other machines up and automated, including the crushing factory, which just requires a little bit of lava. And uh, by the way, I am upgrading the base machine to factories. Factories give you three slots by default, and you can upgrade to higher tiers later on, but it's like almost free immediately to have this upgraded into the factory. It just requires two basic control circuits. Now, with all of this automation processing and getting all of these machines set up, there is one little tip I know towards the end of the video for you who have watched to the end. Well, you're gonna get this little tidbit of knowledge. You can use a configuration card. It's really nice. So for all of these basic infusion factories, I can go ahead and control or hold, hold down shift and right click. And then I can just simply paste these settings into here. It says control C. So I guess we can control C on this. Use the configuration card to copy the configuration. I thought just shift right click it says uh, retrieved. And then we right click on here to inject. Um, so we just simply need to right click on here. And now all of the same settings that we had set up before are now currently set up. Uh, and the same thing works for this. So I can go ahead and copy the settings of this machine and then paste it over here to our crushing factory. Now it does say sometimes uh, unequal configuration data formats. I think it all depends on the, the machines and the type and how everything's set up. So it may not work for everything, but these machines are really easy to set up. But for the same machines, this is perfect. So now with everything automated over here, I should have every single processor ready to go. So I have all of my different patterns set up in here that makes all of the enriched parts, uh, including obsidian going into here, making the obsidian dust. Then this is making exclusively steel. This one is making two patterns that both use redstone. So if they use the same catalyst, you can put them together. And uh, so I'm gonna be making the circuit and also the infused alloy in the same one. And then over here, these both use uh, the same catalyst, which is enriched diamonds. And so you can put these two together and then over here is our final, which is using enriched obsidian, making the atomic alloy. So with all of that, I should be able to craft atomic alloy and all of the machines should fire up and should get started and should run without problem. It's not the fastest thing in the world, but at least we can easily automate this without needing to hand place every single bit. Um, and you can get away with just using four of these basic infusion factories. So you'll see here, this will all go in and then the catalyst will go in and we're just ready to go at that point. Look at this, it's perfect. Um, and I love it. And this right here is what I think automation and uh, the modded Minecraft experience is all about. Having a problem and solving it with some sort of automation. Ah, I love it. And my favorite part is sharing it with you guys. So if you guys did enjoy today's episode and you learned something new about auto crafting with refined storage or maybe even mechanism, let me know down in the comments below. Also, let me know what you would like to see me do as there's a ton of mods in this mod pack and we're eventually going to cover most of them, uh, but I would love to know. Maybe we can dive into some before others because you guys are super interested in it. So let me know in the comments below. Also, guys, it's now time to thank the amazing supporter of today's episode. But before we do that, be sure to click that subscribe button if you haven't already and give this video a huge thumbs up. And that amazing thanks is going to go out to Kekum. Thank you so much for your amazing support, by the way, over on the Discord, becoming a Discord premium member and supporting in one of the best ways possible. Oh, I thank you guys so very much for watching. I hope to see you in the next one. And you know how it goes. As always, thanks for watching. Bye.